In case you thought I didn't do work with the tractor, now you know I do more than just maintenance and tips and that kind of stuff. And check this out. These are my woods, open and clear. I spin around 180 degrees. This is the parkland. Look at these barberry bushes. They are just everywhere. So I try to keep them out of my woods and from taking over. They've got little thorns on them and they hurt. Uh, yeah, trying to keep uh, the trails open and keep my woods open. And then that first clip you saw was me putting a new fill plug into my rear differential. The old fill plug was okay, but it was only eight bucks. And I was like, I better uh, replace it because what I did, I replaced the cover I bent this one just the slightest little bit getting it off and I didn't want to chance it so I got a new one and then I put a new lube locker gasket on instead of using Permatex and the reason I changed my rear differential fluid in the truck is because it's limited slip and I was getting some uh, some chatter there's uh, these little clutch plates packed in there uh, for the limited slip and I guess they get uh, I guess over time you know they're, they're supposed to be sealed rear diffs in these things lifetime fluid but i guess over time uh just you know normal little metal bits from manufacturing even right out of the gates gets in those clutch packs um and they don't slip right so when you're at a stop and you turn that you know the the diff you know kicks in uh to let you know let it slip and you get chatter uh so that's my understanding i'm no mechanic you're a mechanic post in the comments a little better explanation but i changed the fluid put the new multi-friction in or, or you know fluid with multi-friction and additive and the chatter went away immediately and i've tried it in all temperatures hot cold every variation you can think of chatter totally went away so now let's get to tractor work so what do we have here we have four oil filters i'm going to change the oil in the massey today i'm going to switch to 10 to 1w30 mobile delvac uh, but what I've got, I've got two Agco filters and then two alternate uh, brand filters. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to change the oil with the proper filter, uh, the 371. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these other filters in my old 371 filter. And I'm going to tear them apart and we're going to look at what's inside of them. Now there are more filter alternatives for the GC17 series. Uh, essentially, all you really need is a three-quarter 16 thread, uh, and you can get it to physically fit as long as it's not so long that it's going to hit the hood cover. Uh, you know, it's got to be this. Actually, the frame is a, a little bit longer. You'll see here in a minute. Uh, but as long as it fits in there, you can say, "Hey, this works on my tractor." But the question is, is it the same inside? Now, a couple caveats. I am not a filter deconstruction expert here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of take a look at the differences and show you guys what's inside. I'm also going to link in the description to some alternate filters like the uh, mobile M1-103A. Uh, there's a video where a guy deconstructs or you know t disassembles that, which that one ob obviously also fits the mass. He, he also takes apart the uh, Denso filter, which this 371 is a Denso filter. Uh, so we're going to see if our Denso... I think I'm saying that right, filter is constructed the way his is because then the next question will be, well, instead of paying, uh, I don't know, 18 bucks for the Massey part number, why don't you just go buy the Denso filter for seven bucks if it's the exact same filter, which I don't know if it is. Maybe Denso makes a specific uh, you know, type of you know, filter uh, for the Massey. And I've got spec sheets and everything for you guys to look at. I'll show that later and of course this will be a chaptered video uh, but we're going to look at the specs of these filters beyond just the thread ability to make it actually fit physically fit the tractor and the filter material uh, we're going to look at things like the bypass uh, psi setting and the specs on those and we're going to see which ones match the specs of the massey and which ones don't so I've pulled as much data as I can find. It's gotta be for more than just these four filters. Uh, so let's get started and do a quick oil change.
Okay, so the old filter's off. Uh, we're gonna do a little uh, dry fit of these other filters just to show you how well they fit. So this is the 722 Agco. We're gonna thread it on. Huh. That does not seem to want to catch. What am I missing here? There it goes. It's just a little dry. But that fits just fine and clears, clears the hood. So physically, that would work. Wicks. Threads right on, fits just good, clears the hood, clears everything, no problem. Last up is the Fram. Let's get that on. Fits just fine, clears the hood. That would work physically, work just fine. The actual filter we're going to use here is the Agco Spect filter, and that gasket has lube on it so we're just gonna spin it on and that's it other than clean up and refill nobody wants to see that let's get uh, to the next part of deconstructing these filters I am just kidding. Of course, I'm going to show the refill. You guys can sk skip ahead, but I know. I know Dan wants to see this, so he's going to get to see it. And the restart this time. Here's what we're filling it with. Dan, I think you use the same. I'd love to hear in the comments how you guys do this, but I normally fill it. When I say fill, obviously you start it, run it, you know, check it out. But I normally try to make sure that I'm just above the low line and not too full because I can always add oil, but taking oil out is pain in the rear end. So right there, I am about, about right there. So that's good enough. We'll check it tomorrow and make sure I am good. All right, so here are all four filters lined up. This is my used 371, this is the Agco, and then the Wix and the Fram. I'm gonna make a little notch and then I'm gonna get the tin snips and just try to snip around them. And we'll see how that works. I'm not gonna film that because that is probably going to be a you know what show. Well, that is a very unnatural thing for me to do to cut open a perfectly good filter. That's 49 cents of spilt milk dripping all over my table. Somebody gonna drink this milk. But that is what I did. Okay, first up, the Agco filter that was made. Uh, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. The right filter. <laughs> so here's the center. And then here are, uh, here's the filter medium, which is a little st stuck in there because I ground it out. So the interesting thing with this one is there's no end caps or anything. I've seen like 
some other videos where this whole filter medium is totally enclosed but this just has like glue on the ends holding it together so i'll count the pleats and put it up there on the screen and then inside this is the bypass relief valve uh, you can see it's this plate with the spring in it so that's the construction of the agco filter let's move on to the other agco filter okay these filters are basically clean uh, so here's the front plate and i can tell already that this plate uh, well, I take that back. It's about the same. It's the same. It felt like it might be heavier than uh, the Iseki Denso filter. So here's our drain back valve. And here's the filter. Wow, look at that. Very well constructed, but much smaller. And then the drain back, it's built in, right? And it's just got a separate spring. So that's how it does the, uh, or not drain back, the pressure relief. So that's the pressure relief mechanism for this filter. So look at that. The old Iseki, or the new Iseki versus the old Atco. Much different filter. And again, I'll, I'll pull this apart. I'll count the pleats. Or maybe I'll just count the pleats. So now let's look at the Wix. This is the Wix filter. Pretty heavy plate here. Uh, here's our drain back valve looks almost identical to the old Agco filter, much bigger than the new Agco filter, and the filter construction of the Wix looks identical to the old Agco. Let's pull, let's show you that. Wow, these things look like they're identical. I don't know if the pleats are identical, but they look very, very similar. I better keep those straight so I don't get them mixed up. They look so similar. So now, let's look at the Fram. So here's the Fram top. Here's the drain back valve on the Fram. Very flimsy. Here's the filter media for the Fram. Cardboard, all cardboard. And I'll count those pleats. Metal core. And then here's oh, here's the drain back valve for the uh, Fram. So it's the spring's kind of locked in there with this plastic clip. And there's a tiny little spring there. So isn't that interesting? All right. So let's count the pleats and sort of lay all these parts side by side. And I'll give you a view of all the parts. Okay, so here we have them all laid out in order. Uh, I think as far as filter material, it looks like the Agco is the best one overall because it's got 43 pleats versus the Fram of 39, even though the Fram's a little taller. Uh, the Wix and the old Agco are actually really interesting. They appear to be identical, uh, even down to this anti drain back valve the part numbers on them are identical uh parker so i guess wix outsources to a company called parker now the difference is i did count and i counted this a couple times the pleats are different between these two filters i think the 722 and the wix 51360 are essentially the same filter uh, but the denso is definitely designed a little bit differently Different number of pleats, different gasket. It came sealed, just basically in better packaging condition. I'm going to go look at the other video. I think it's Whip City Wrencher, maybe is the guy's name, where he did some of these other filters. And then I'm going to do some comparisons here. All right. I thought this would be a very simple video. It's turned out to be quite complicated. I thought the Whip City Wrencher videos combined with the uh, deconstruction that I did here would draw a good conclusion but i'm not really there yet so there's going to need to be a part two so let me put the spreadsheet that i have so far on the screen so you can see that and kind of study it i think more research is needed i think i also maybe need to go buy the fram xg4967 and maybe even the bosch 3311 because they seem to be the better filters overall when you consider 
you know, if you're trying to get within that 11 to 17 PSI range that's in the Massey Service Manual, they're the best that combine that number, the PSI number, with the Micron rating, with the efficiency rating, uh, to give you, the, I think, the best overall filter, maybe even, probably even better than the Agco filters. Uh, but what conclusions do I have from this video so far? One, I would say don't buy the 722 Agco filter, ever. It's 19 bucks. Go buy the Wix uh, 51360 or, which, or the equivalent Napa 1360 filter. Seems to be the same filter to me. I would also encourage you to go and I'll link them into the description here and check out Whip City Rancher. Uh, he's got a cool little process set up with the way he deconstructs these oil filters. Uh, and check out the videos that I've linked there in the, my description of this video because all of those filters should fit the Massey, physically fit the Massey. And then I think what I'm going to have to do is just go buy the Fram and the Bosch and then put all of these side by side, do some of my own measurements, and then I can give you just an oil filter video without all the other front end stuff that I showed you in this video. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, things you want me to address in that next video, post them in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.